I'm sure we've all said at one point or another, I wish I knew back then what I know now, or at least a phrase to that kind of effect. I know that I certainly have many different times in my life. And uh, in regards to astrophotography, it's no exception. I really do wish I could reach back through time and give myself a message or two, which maybe would have saved me a lot of time and frustration, effort and money to, I think it's fair to say. Um, but some things you can't do, but I'm going to do the next best thing. And I'm going to try to give you five points here, which uh, I wish I'd figured out a lot sooner, basically. The, this, the kind of things that I wish I could have told my past self in the hopes it'll reach the right people and it will do the same for you. It'll save you some time, effort, money stress overall um and i will ask by the way if you do have a moment and you have something buzzing around in your head which you uh, think is something that you'd like to share with other people out there please do leave a comment down below and uh, you know i will certainly read every single one of them i love to hear what you guys have got to say i'll reply to them all uh it might take me a couple of days i'll get there trust me um but you never know who else is going to read those messages and uh, maybe get something useful from them so i i really appreciate it and i know i'm not the only one so anyway without any further ado point number one that i'm going to give you this is something i'm still kind of making peace with right now and that is don't kick yourself for missing a night um it is going to happen every now and again you know when you just get started out you guys are going to want to take every single clear night that you can possibly get your hands on and honestly, even some of the nights that are not so clear as well, um, I've, I've done my fair share of that, having to uh, hurriedly pack up your gear while the first drops of rain starts falling on you unexpectedly. <laughs> but um, at, at some point down the line, it will happen that um, you are going to have to miss a night. And when you do, you need to be able to do it comfortably and uh, and without guilt basically that's one one of the key things it's a very very long-term hobby obviously a lot of people who get into it and establish a good relationship with it are going to stay doing this for uh, perhaps much of their lives in many cases it could be many many years um, or perhaps it's something you do for a few years have a break and then come back to whatever it looks like it's a long-term thing uh, but making peace with it you know that missing a night is okay for any reason or even for no reason you know what i mean uh you need to be able to do that in in order to ensure long-term guilt-free enjoyment and a really good relationship with uh with astrophotography rather than a very toxic one because i know that i certainly had that kind of thing going on to a degree especially with uh, me leaning into it and doing youtube uh through it too it kind of doubled up the pressure that I was putting on myself and and if I did want to miss a night because I was just really tired and wanted a rest or whatever the reason was you're pretty vile with yourself to be honest or at least I I certainly was um <laughs> and it's not good it's no it's no good way to do things so just chill out the stars are going to be there when you come back All right, so however long you need to have take the time and come back refreshed um when you do come back like that you'll be more motivated you'll be more meticulous too so uh, you actually your shots will probably improve overall you're going to be more careful and uh, and taking better shots on the whole so that's point number one don't kick yourself for missing a night uh really really don't point number two kind of feeds into that though and uh, it's going to be don't be afraid to get rid of your gear so uh not all of it. I'm not saying quit astrophotography and <laughs> that's not the message I want to give. But I do want to say that if uh, if you are finding yourself, for whatever reason, maybe starting to want to skip more nights than not, um, try to analyse why. What, what is the actual reason behind that kind of thing? So if it's um, the really good reasons, you know, like you want to spend the night with your family, have dinner and watch a movie or something, do that absolutely do that that's far more important far far more important um but if it's just ah uh, well you know it's kind of cold and uh, my gear's really heavy have a look at that do you know what i mean see the reasons why so for me some of the things that's perhaps stopped me setting up as often as i uh, as i possibly could um well fatherhood being one of them just leaving you tired but um the gear being heavy has been like a thing and i've been able to sidestep that 
a lot. So I've, I've imaged when I otherwise wouldn't have been able to by making sure I've got access to a, a light, portable, very easy to use rig. So uh, for me, particular, that looks like a, a small refractor on a harmonic mount with an ASI air based camera on it because it's just so easy and, and kind of stress free to set up. It means that I will use it because it offers me almost no pushback whatsoever on any given night. So I, I can do that, whereas I can't always guarantee that a night's going to be free and easy um, if I'm setting up a bigger, heavier rig. And, and certainly historically, that's been true too. For the longest time, I'd got myself into the, uh, the method of thinking where bigger is better is better. And uh, I went down that path. I was buying huge Newtonians, for example, like a 12 inch Newt. I had at one point, okay, I had a couple as it happens. There's a reason for all that. But um, imagine, you know, you're having to try to set up an EQ8 and 20 kilograms of counterweights and then a, a 12 inch Newtonian and stuff every single night. Any single opportunity you get to not set that thing up, you're going to take, or at least I certainly did. You have to be incredibly motivated to go through the uh, the whole rigmarole of that kind of thing. Whereas carrying out a small rig, like I mentioned, you can do that on your worst night, to be honest. I think I could set that up with a flu. So uh, I think, you, you know, you're good in that regards. So that's that's something to definitely have a look at. Don't be afraid to sell gear if it's simply just not doing it for you or it's holding you back. Or you just fancy a change. Don't be married to it. Do you know what I mean? It is just tools and equipment at the end of the day. And uh, don't be afraid to change them. Point number three is going to be don't obsess over exposure lengths. So um, I'd, I'd see, you know, these great images being taken from, uh, from wonderful locations usually. <laughs> and I'd see that they're using 10 minute exposures, that kind of thing, and loads of them too. And uh, while that is the right way to do things if you can let's say if you had a massively high keep rate nothing's really going wrong and you can take these 10 minute subs and not be blowing things out yeah do so but uh, for me i've tried many many times and yeah i can sometimes do it it it's not perfect and to be honest i put way too much effort into trying to do it to the point where i uh I almost convinced myself that if I wasn't trying to take these longer, longer exposures, I was probably wasting my time. Couldn't have been further from the truth, to be honest with you. Um, there's definitely two sides to this. Now, with these modern cameras that we have access to today, with very low read noise, the uh, the kind of Goldilocks zone, if you like, where you're able to take a extremely effective exposure length, um, is massive. It, it really, it's really massive these days. So it could look all the way from, uh, especially in broadband, it could be like 10 seconds up to 10 minutes. And you're going to get roughly the same end result as long as you stack this, you know, the same period of time, if you like. Stacking one is going to be easier than the other. The longer subs, you've got fewer of them and it is easier to stack them in terms of a uh, just a, a number crunching game. So don't you know, take this to the extreme and go outside of that Goldilocks zone and start taking 50,000 five second exposures. You've been warned. <laughs> it, it can work uh, for some reasons, but it's not the right way to do things really for most things. But do have a look at taking maybe two minute exposures for just about everything. And that includes, you know, if you are someone using very narrow filters, three nanometer filters or something like that, don't be afraid to have a go with short subs. Stack them up, see what the actual end result looks like. I encourage experimentation of your own. I've certainly done plenty of it and I found that there's, yes, there's a difference, but there's not a massive difference between 10 minute subs being stacked up or one minute subs being stacked up. And uh, when you do that kind of thing, it takes off the pressure that you might put on yourself to exact every single drop of juice that you can from this incredibly expensive equipment that we, that we use and get to use also infrequently in many cases. Uh, so remove the pressure. Don't think about it too much. The Goldilocks zone is massive. Just take a few minute exposures for whatever you're doing. You're honestly going to be fine. And the other part of the argument is, let's say if you are taking 10 minute subs, like I've done many, many times, when you are sifting through these things, eventually getting to the point where you're getting ready to stack them up and, and you're kind of fishing through and having to look for any single bad frames. It hurts to throw away a 10 minute sub. It doesn't feel good at all. And uh, 
I'm probably not alone in this, but sometimes I may have stacked a sub or two that I perhaps shouldn't have done. Very small amount of star trailing creeping in, and you think, oh, I can't throw it away. <laughs> and then you keep it. And really, you should be absolutely savage with culling your data. Um, I mean, ferocious with it. Don't accept anything other than the absolute best frames, as that's what's going to get you the best results. It really is uh, true to say. Whereas, if you weren't so fixated on 10 minute subs for example and you split that same temporal segment of time um up into two minute subs you know what i mean so you get five of them you can find the moment let's say where you would have had to throw away that 10 minute sub because of one little blip which is usually what it is it's not traditionally speaking i would say at least in my experience 10 minutes of bad guiding all night long it's usually just one little blip that gets you um you could find the sub where it went wrong, throw it out, keep the other eight minutes. Very quickly, when you get to do that kind of thing, you are going to make up any deficit in signal-to-noise ratio that there might have existed previously in a perfect scenario where you get to stack equal amounts of 10-minute subs and 2-minute subs or whatever. So a um, bit of a uh, self-solving solu- uh, situation, I guess, when you, when you do put the time in an experiment with that. So don't worry about it too much. Pick a reasonable exposure and don't think about it anymore. Just put your effort elsewhere. So that's uh, definitely point number three for you. Now, point number four, this is definitely something I'm still struggling with to this day. And uh, if you can make peace with it sooner rather than later, it's going to set you up for more fun in the future, I would say. And that is don't try to capture everything every single year. I still do it. I, I can't help myself. So I'll see the changing of the seasons, you know, um, for me right now, it's going to be a battle because Orion is coming into view and I'm just going to have to shoot it for a bit. But I'm going to try to keep it for just a bit. Um, I'm not going to take this year's Orion and have it be just another, you know, chapter in the book of orion where I've, I've taken a shot of it every single year that i've been doing astrophotography for example this year will be no exception but it's not going to be a massive one for example i'm going to put my time into shooting something else probably i've said this and now i probably am going to take a shot of orion <laughs> but uh, if you can pick the targets that really speak to you on any given year um do so Put your time and effort into those because you are going to end up with better shots from it. And honestly, you can have a better relationship with astrophotography on the whole because uh, if you don't, I think you kind of paint yourself into a corner because in most consumer available gear, let's say it falls within a, a range of focal lengths from like 250 out to 2000, a lot of it in terms of uh, focal length. You are limited to a, uh, it's a not, inexhaustible list of targets so you really can end up feeling like you're just treading water and shooting the same things again and again because you probably ah if you're anything like me there can be any mini, any number of reasons for doing it right uh, i mean like i've said for me when i see orion it's almost like you're eating an old friend or something without getting too sentimental so do so take your shot but don't dwell on it and uh, maybe try putting your time into other things that you haven't given quite so much attention to. And uh, then you can also reap other benefits, such as uh, the old saying, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So if you don't make your shot of Orion this year, just use that example again. Maybe next year, when you do allow yourself to do it, you'll put all the more effort into it because you'll be so enthused by the fact you're getting to shoot this beautiful target again in earnest and really go after it that... uh, end up with better shots overall again it's, it kind of all circles back to that first thing though um the stars aren't going anywhere so take your time pace yourself it's really really important in this it's not a fast-paced thing if you take a fast-paced approach you're gonna burn out that's uh, that's <laughs> that's the truth of it so uh, i'm gonna leave you with point number five now i'm i'm trying to get through as as rapidly as i can Try things for yourself before judging. And this I really wish I could have done this earlier on. And now you absolutely can do this. So um, what I mean by that is uh, for the longest time, let's say going back to the earlier example where I'm looking at these beautiful images online and uh, seeing about the exposure lengths they were taken with. I'm also looking at the gear that they were taken with, for example. 
and I'm making this mental shopping list and before you know it you're finding any justification at all to go out and get this gear and, and kind of make it happen and if you do um, I often found that let's say if I did see a beautiful shot of whatever it may be and I saw it was taken with this telescope and this filter and this camera and suddenly you find yourself with that equipment which is I have done in the past um, through being influenced by looking at stuff online and I find I cannot for the life of me, replicate the shot that got taken. It leaves you feeling dejected a little bit. You're just feeling a bit sad that you've spent all this money and effort kind of pulling this gear together and then you can't get what you wanted. And it's usually something completely out of your control as to why. I mean, you could be the greatest processor in the world, let's say, for example. I'm not, but you might be. But if you live under terrible skies, you're going to have a hard time keeping up with someone who's imaging remotely for example, um, you may never make up the gap kind of thing. Um, so this is what I'm going to say to you. By trying things for yourself before judging, um, do make use of downloads of data. There's a lot of people out there sharing data. I do it myself. Every single tutorial video on my channel, I share the data so that you can work along with me because well, it's a great way to learn. But also just as an opportunity for people to try out data from uh, a really average location probably worse than average location to be honest and and get a real feel for what it's like to process that kind of thing you might download my data have a go at it and think this is no good i want better than this which is totally legit in which case you know you might have to be looking at either better equipment than i've used or better skies than i've used in which case you probably are gonna have to then look at downloading similar uh equipped data from uh a remote observatory, for example, and see if that does it for you. There's a lot to weigh up in astrophotography, and uh, sometimes it really does come down to just trying things out, but it doesn't always have to involve pressing buy it now kind of thing and, and making a big purchase. It can just be equipping yourself ahead of time with uh, data taken from rigs, trying out processing it. It could be even as simple as this one would really help me trying out data from one shot color and mono cameras for example it might be that you like one image more than the other but you might not like processing it or you might love processing it you won't know until you try so uh, make use of the abundance of data that is out there so uh, that is something i wish i really would have been able to make more use of and the reason i couldn't by the way it's because, well, there just was, wasn't that much amateur data getting shared but uh, the only data there really was out there was from uh, observatories kind of thing and it's always high quality with incredible equipment which is one thing it's perfectly valid uh but it does set you with unrealistic expectations for the kind of stuff that you're going to do from home in many cases which led to a lot of disappointment for me which uh, i'd really rather people avoid <laughs> so uh yeah those are going to be my five points again i will ask if you do have uh anything that's rattling around in your head that you think is something you'd like to share with people um please do. I'd love to read it. Like I say, I will read every single comment. I'll reply to them all. It just might take me a couple of days, um, as it usually does. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's not through, through lack of enthusiasm. Thank you, by the way, everybody who does that kind of thing. I, I really do enjoy reading all the different perspectives on things, and it helps me build my own perspective too, I think, by exposing yourself to other ideas and other ways of thinking. So I'll leave you at that. I will say thank you very much indeed for watching. I, uh, I really do appreciate your support. I, I really do. And uh, I will leave you with the simple message of look after yourselves, those around you. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, though, bless guys.